Hi there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com here with another Pioneer video. This one was by far the most requested card to brew around. Probably my most famous video? I don't know, maybe not, because I think that I had more of a YouTube share back years ago when I was still sponsored with Cool Stuff Inc. in the height of uh, where kind of the YouTube MCG creators started taking off. So I might be known for more of that time period than the Kaladish time period uh, for my brewing. However, in the more recent years, I think this was definitely my most popular video series and my mo most popular brew, probably my most successful brew ever in standard as this was a very, very competitive deck. I don't know why it never went mainstream. It was one of my decks that was showcased on the mothership as I was able to 5-0 multiple times on MT Joe and then it gets picked up and then people like LSV review it and people build uh, their own similar decks of the uh, the card. So I was one of the first people messing around with Marionette Master as far as it was concerned with the God Pharaoh's Gift because it's just a great combo with Marionette Master and the God Pharaoh's Gift. Bring, bring it back in. You can either have a 4-4 four, four with three servos or you have a 4-6 uh, with the or excuse me, a 7-7 seven, seven with the Marionette Master with the plus ones and counters and making a token with the God Pharaoh's Gift. And then you can just sacrifice a couple artifacts to finish off the game. So if you haven't seen that video series, I highly suggest you go and check it out. I know it's a couple standards ago now, what, two rotations ago of the Marionette Master uh, combo. Uh, however, it, it was a goodie. It's a brew that I'm very, very proud of. And many of my uh, subscribers still remember it fondly. And that's why this card has been very highly requested to brew within Pioneer. So let me just talk about the combo here. God Pharaoh's Gift can be cheated out with the card called Gate to the Afterlife. There's two ways to do it. You can either refurbish the God Pharaoh's Gift from the graveyard, so you want to be pitching it, and then using a spell that can get it back. And there are a few ways to do that. Um, there are also ways to cheat it from your deck. You can use like Madcap Experiment, uh, but that has like a, a weird life uh, risk to it. You can also go uh, the Indomitable Creativity, and I'm sure there's other ways to pull this card out of your deck and directly onto the battlefield. And But Gate of the Afterlife is the way that i found to be the best, most efficient way to do what you want, uh, at least stabilizing, until you can get your combo. Uh, so this particular deck is going to be a Gate to the Afterlife deck to try to then get God Pharaoh's Gift out, because Gate to the Afterlife just says if you have uh, was it five or more? So sacrifice gate to the afterlife, search your graveyard hand and library for God Pharaoh's gift and put it on the battlefield. If you search your library this way, act, uh, shuffle it to activate this ability if there are six or more creatures in your graveyard. So the whole uh, name of the game is get six creature cards in your graveyard, then use gate to the afterlife to get God Pharaoh's gift, and then use God Pharaoh's gift to animate the Marionette Master back from the graveyard. And then if you have a Metalwork Colossus in the graveyard, you can use the Metalwork Colossus to sacrifice the uh, Marionette Master tokens, as well as the God Pharaoh's Gift. And it'll, it'll allow you to do it twice while it's still on the stack with Metalwork Colossus. And that ends up being lethal uh, with the Marionette Master then attacking in. So it will do 16 damage from the sacking of the God Pharaoh's Gift and three tokens. And the God Pharaoh's Gift is going to give Marionette Master haste, and then that's four damage. Or you can simply cast something like a Walking Ballista uh, post combat to get that last four points of damage uh so that was sort of the combo so in this particular deck i'm going to go for a, a number of combos i don't know if the metalwork colossus is still the best way to do it i've got one just a one of right now uh back during my old brew it was a blue black deck and i ran two metalwork colossuses and three marriott masters and the rest was just ways to dig for the deck uh, this one i'm going to try a number of different combinations and maybe we'll end up back in that route, but I want to try a red-black brew with our favorite Alesha Who Smiles at Death, one of the very, very popular commander cards, and the Masters of Cruelty that also are, are pretty decent God Pharaoh's Gift targets. So Master of Cruelties, if you get Master of Cruelties back from the uh, graveyard with haste from the God Pharaoh's Gift, it attacks in. Uh, opponent's life total becomes one and then you can cast like a walking ballista post main or if you have a walking ballista out or a uh, chamber sentry you can get that last bit of damage off uh, from these two constructs uh, and then a lash who smells uh, at death is also a way you can get marionette master out from the graveyard because if you attack you get back a creature with power two or less from your graveyard tapped and attacking with marionette master uh, it can then throw out those one one servos or become a, a four six at that point and if you have any other artifacts on the battlefield that then can be sacked that's another way to dish off some pretty significant damage so I'm sure that the deck wants to go one 
of the two routes. I'm not, I, I'm pretty sure it doesn't want to go both routes, but this is a, a thought experiment again. This isn't trying to be the most competitive deck right off the bat. It's going to see what cards work, what cards don't, and what we need to add it to the mix. So I'm going to run 20 lands because that's about right for a deck like this is going to be filtering through lands. We're going to be running insolent in insolent neonate it works very well with gate to the afterlife so it has discard a card and sacrifice insolent neonate to draw a card so with gate to the afterlife you can actually go through multiple cards so throwing your marionette masters and master of cruelties away to really be digging for those uh car uh creatures to then get god Pharaoh's gift it's another way also to put the god Pharaoh's gifts in your graveyard if you happen to draw them uh then the two drop is going to be the rick's maddie reveler this is going to enter the battlefield you can discard a card and draw a card and, and then if you have the spectacle cost, which is very easy to get with Walking Ballista or the other construct, uh, then you can cast it for a spectacle cost and it just simply, uh, what, it just it, instead discard your hand and draw, you draw three cards. So it's a way to come back from late games uh, when you're out of cards and you've had to use resources against your opponent. So I don't know how well this card's going to do. We're running Smuggler's Copter. Last time around, I ended up cutting this actually it was banned so i couldn't even play with it so smoke copter probably is where you want to be uh it is we do have eight one drops in this deck if you count the sentries and then the we have an additional eight two drops if you count walking ballista and rick's maddie revelers so it should be quite easy to get smugglers copter online and start pitching things uh, we're also going to be running the Merchant of Veil vale to discard cards or draw cards. It's another card that we can then cast uh, to make it a 2-3 blocker, or then we can start looting from then on. I don't know how powerful this card it could be. I was thinking of Beaumont Courier in this slot, or maybe a, a mix of the both, uh, but I decided to cut Beaumont Courier, mainly because there are 14 tickets right now on MT Joe and I'm poor. So <laughs> I don't, don't want to be dumping back in. I sold out of MT Joe uh, during 2018 when there was the big arena crash of all MT Joe cards, and then... I just haven't really put anything back in it. So it's just a feels bad thing to put more money into a, a platform I don't even know is going to survive. Uh, so anyway, other ones, we have Aleshu who smiles the death of the three of, Master of Cruelties as a three of, and the Marionette Master as a three of with Walking Ballistas, Chamber Sentries, uh, both of a full play set, and a one of Metalwork Colossus and two God Pharaoh's Gift. The sideboard I've decided to run out uh, just your usual suspects in the sideboard for when Thought Seize. When Thought Seize is good, it's great. Uh, we also have a Collective Brutality for more ripping out, plus we can pitch cards. Uh, I'm going to run a Murderous Rider and a Ravenous Chupacabra. So Chupacabra has a lot of synergy both with God Pharaoh's Gift as well as Alesha who smiles at death, so I thought I'd try it out. I also thought about putting a Gaunti in the deck, but I don't know if Gaunti is where we want to be because it's another renewable resource with Alesha and the God Pharaoh's Gift. Um, then we're going to run a Spark Harvest because I think it's a pretty decent uh, um, card after a Gate to the Afterlife to then sacrifice a creature to kill off a Planeswalker or a creature. Possibly Dreadboar is just better in the slot, but I thought, you know, we're kind of a sacrifice deck. Let's just go that route. And then, of course, Colgan's Command is just a necessary evil in this format. Uh, just does everything you want it to do. Now we have a few uh, more synergy cards in here. A Siege Gang Commander. Siege Gang Commander is another card that is has a lot of synergy with the Lesh who smiles at death. Puts out three 1-1 one, one goblins. Also a 2-2. Two, two. Same thing with God Pharaoh's Gift. You get it back as a 4-4. Four, four, and then you, you, you get back three 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens. And we have some Garys in here too. So Gary has synergy with, with both the God Pharaoh's Gift. It makes it a copy of the card. So it retains its mana cost. And so when it comes into play, it will do the at least two life um, as well as this is a nice little one just to get back with Alesha. Uh, they're not, I think maybe that Gary wants to be in a heavier black based deck, but I'm thinking if you do need to stabilize, it's a pretty good one. And Whip of Erebus is another card that actually looks pretty decent with this particular combo. The problem is like Godfrey's Gift with Marinette Master is much better uh, by either giving you the plus ones counters or the, the servos with a 4-4 body. Whip of Erebus is just putting in a 1-3 Marinette Master. So that's that's a lot worse uh, than the God Pharaoh's route. Uh, this still is a good card, though, with Master of Cruelties to return a creature from the graveyard to the battlefield, and then it gets haste and then attack attack with it. Uh, so Whip of Erebus, I think, is, is worthwhile to put in this deck. There's also the new one out of uh, the... Uh, Throne of Eldraine that costs uh, two less for each creature in your graveyard and two black that is very interesting in this particular list. But um, speaking of another card, like even the 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 uh, Ginger Brute seems kind of interesting just because it's an easy card to, to to kill for three life and trigger off the gate to the afterlife. So Ginger Brute's another card that could easily go in this deck. So anyway, I've rambled on a bit here. Don't have a lot of time to play. Man, the store's been busy. I've been uh, was running it solo today. Uh, excuses excuses i want to get to brewing i'm going to try to 
uh, brew as, as much as I can. Uh, but you're just gonna have to take the games when I get them. I know I said I want to start streaming on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Need things to calm down. Probably not until even after the holidays is that going to be the case where I can actually start to stream. So let's just go into Pioneer practice here and give this guy a go and see if we can get some neat little combos going on with this God Pharaoh's Gift deck. So I actually do think the God Pharaoh's Gift is powerful enough for this format. It seems to be right on par with how fast the format is. Um, this unfortunately is going to be a mulligan. We don't have a way to get anything into our graveyard. This gate to the afterlife is awesome. Uh, in here with the Walking Bliss and the Chamber, chamber Sentry, but we need another land, and Dragon's Force Club is going to come into play tapped uh, with this, so we have to ship it back. Uh, much better hand with the Godfrey's Gift. Yep, this is fine because we just do just need, and Godfrey's Gift is still the card you want to put on the bottom because you can tutor up from anywhere. So, actually never played this deck, too, with the new Mulligan rule. I think this deck would be very good uh, with the London Mulligan. It was a very consistent deck in Standard. Again, I, I implore you to go and watch the video footage of the Marionette Master combo. I uh, did a ton of them uh, back during the Kaladesh days, uh, or Amonkhet days, Kaladesh days. Uh, and it was very, very fun. Uh, it's probably the most competitive I've ever been able to create a deck. Opponent's going to mulligan to three, and I'm sure they're just going to scoop it up because we're in the tournament practice. Probably should be playing four realsies. I guess they're going to keep the ley line of sanctity and a ley line of sanctity, so they're out of cards. So that doesn't matter. We don't do anything against the ley line of sanctity, so I'll just start off with a mountain and an ins insolent neonate and pass the turn. So I guess we're goldfishing against our opponent. If they do end up winning, then uh, that's a pretty bad sign for our deck. This could be an all-that-glitters deck is oh that's kind of nifty so yeah so nitros and nix had to get had to get a card ban with the other ley line and now this person is running nitros with the ley line of sanctity uh so they're gonna be able to ramp out some significant mana that's that's pretty smart uh so here i still think the best play is just to uh attack in with the neonate and then i think just rick's maddie reveler is better uh i guess we could fill back up our hand theoretically but we're just going to go ahead and do this uh, cast it's going to come into play and we're going to throw away the marionette master opponent still needs to find ways to actually make the knight they're trying to make nix actually tap for mana so we get a smuggler's copter for next turn that's going to also help us get there so we need to find a gate to the afterlife and then be able to crack it so nothing by my opponent so again we're gold fishing here um yeah uh da -da -da -da. yes we'd like to play two life because i'd like to cast everything here I'd like to cast the Smuggler's Copter and um, do the Merchant of the Veil. Or do I care about the Walking Ballista? I think we just hold it up. Huh. It's because I have to discard a card. So, yeah, we need to find, at this point, we need to find things that want to be pitched. Put it's a, uh, a land away. Do I care about the Walking Ballista? I actually don't think I do. Okay. So we can go on to venture and actually cast that. I still want this temple for sure. Well, let's go ahead and crew. So we'll crew the insolent neonate. Go ahead and attack in with our two cards. Uh, yes, activate that. And there at this point, I think we'll just... Ditch the mountain, which isn't where we want to be, uh, but Temple of Malice, and throw this on the top, actually, because can we get there? We might be able to get there with the land. We do want to be able to... No, no, no. Put it on bottom, because I'm casting the gate to the afterlife. Yeah. Okay, so I'm casting the gate to the afterlife, and then next turn I should be able to... No, I still won't be able to find... The cards that I need so that's what you could rely on back in the old standard is it was a very aggressive format and see what we would have drawn here so last year small as a death we'd have been able to insolent neonate and another walking ballista might have been able to get us there would have been being able to discard those two had four in the graveyard five in the graveyard so not quite getting there unless so draw draw discard and Yes, we would have been able to get to the Insolent Neonate next turn. So we would have had the Gate to the Afterlife on with the Marionette Master. Uh, however, there wouldn't be a uh, a Colossus in the graveyard. Uh, we have no clue what our opponent is actually doing. 
I thought Seize actually seems really good against these particular decks if they're running uh, what I'm thinking they're running. But let's just goldfish this again. Let's just see exactly how uh, this would be like a game one, but our opponent gets a sideboard versus us. Uh, well, they can come with like ley lines. I do think that this deck is pretty decent versus ley lines because you can just start casting big like walking ballistas. It's fine. Uh, we'll go ahead and keep this. this is, it's a, a very reasonable hand. And we'll lead off with just insolent, insolent neonate again. And opponent starts with the ley line of sanctity in the battlefield with a planes. And see if our opponent has like I'm thinking this is some sort of hexproof bogles. No, it's it's a ramp deck, so I, I have not a clue what my opponent's doing. Uh, we'll go ahead and throw out neonate. And opponent misses a land drop again, huh? And Dragon Skull Summit. And we'll go ahead and attack in again. And then I am just going to do this right now with the Haggle. And we'll get rid of a Swamp. No, we want to get rid of... Yeah, Swamp's fine. And there's a Master of Cruelties. Uh, which we can get in the graveyard. Uh, but that's all she wrote this turn. So I thought about running Generator Servant in this in this mix too. Yeah, we're just gold fishing with this game. As our opponent does not have any. So we can go... This, this is going to be a fun little example with Alesha though. So let's go Alesha. And then attack in with the uh, Neonate. Oh, they both have first strike is the problem. That's kind of a, a non-bo with the... But we still should be able to cast the Walking Ballista next turn. So this is going to be an interesting... Uh, if my opponent doesn't scoop here, I'll, I'll show you exactly what we do. So maybe my opponent's going to give one more turn. Looks like they're scooping it up. Nope, did play something. So let's see if they play anything here. So we're going to throw the land down. We are going to discard a card. To draw a card, we'll discard Master of Cruelties. We'll discard a card. We'll go to combat. Attack with Alesha. Alesha then gets back the Master of Cruelties uh, for the Black Black. Comes into play. They both hit at the same time. And. Yeah. So if it's unblocked. If attacks the player. That player becomes one. And oh, and, and Master Cruelties assigns no combo. So Alesha and Master Cruelties actually just. Yeah. Just finish it off. Because this assigns no combo. But this still does three. So that's the combo with Alesha. I guess that was interesting enough to goldfish. Kind of slow and clunky, but again, that is what you have to work out the details to see which cards, you know, end up working out very well and which cards are actually struggling. Uh, let's go ahead and create one more. And I'll play one more here, and we'll play more of this deck as time goes on. Again, I'm looking for, for your um, suggestions in the comment section below. The comment section I do read. I don't comment that often uh, to the comments, but... The Rotting Registrar for the Val the, the Varls was a great idea, by the way. I need to do an update on the Varls deck and just go all in on those um, Rotting Registrars because I think that's the perfect card for Varls. Uh, probably get rid of something like the... Um, yeah, at that point, we can we can probably play a lot more greedy with the one-drops, uh, the three threes, because we can, we can plan on ditching them with the Rotting Registrars. All right, so, wow, must be Ley Lines galore. Now, I guess everyone's trying to break ley lines with Nykthos Shrine and Nyx. Seems pretty good in mono blue with Nykthos, to be honest. Uh, so we'll just go Merchant the Veil, because we do have a discard uh, target. And this should be pretty decent as well, because we have Gate to the Afterlife. Maybe you could have made the the um, argument that I should have gone for a Chamber Sentry, just on one. And I might do it this turn. So I think Temple of Malice is better. Just Temple. 
and we'll scry. And that can go on top because, no, we'll put it on bottom because we're probably going to draw another land. And I'm just going to go ahead and undo this. And I think we still want to go with another merchant. Now we'll go we'll go with the chamber sentry for on one. That's fine. I'm okay with that that play. A witching well. So my opponent is definitely trying to go for a devotion route with the ley line of anticipation. It's very interesting that people are doing this. That they're like, hey, okay, Knight the Shrine of Nyx isn't banned, so. How can we break it with cards that enter the battlefield with two um, right off the bat? So there's Fibble, Fibble Tip the Lost. Uh, this card is definitely a card we will look at uh, when we go back to the Marriott Master uh, blue, uh, blue black version. So another temple, but I think we'll, we'll just get the gate out here. This is pretty good. And pass the turn. So opponent has one, two, three, four. So Knight of Shining Nyx would be amazing here for starting to get devotion. Uh, and a Narset, too. Narset is actually very difficult because it is going to be taking down all of our cards here. But we can actually we can actually take care of Narset next turn because we won't get to draw cards. And I think we do need to draw cards here. So I get, do get a tick down in our set. Can't quite finish it off. Let's Fibble Tip go to... I guess it becomes a target of a spell. It goes to its owner's library. So we'll see what comes down now. I'm sure this is a blue devotion-based deck. It looks like that that's what they're trying to do. So four cards still in hand. To Fairy... And to fairy bouncing, I think is going to be fine, because I Nar Narset's still being difficult here. So I think I allow. Okay, so to fairy's just going to go for a plus. So we need to attack into. I'm going to do it right now. We're going to attack into Narset. But Teferi is annoying, beyond annoying. Um, I think we'll just go for the temple and cast the merchant. Or do we want to put a counter on the walking ballista? Because we only have one card in hand. I think this is fine to put on top. And I think merchant's fine. Teferi is annoying, though. I didn't even think about Teferi because Teferi would definitely shut down God Pharaoh's gift decks. Not really, though, because you get it the turn it comes out, and Teferi is something you can't uh, bounce on your, your opponent's turn. So four cards in hand from... There's another Narset in hand, too, which is super annoying. Uh, but if my opponent does cast Narset, it should give us some leeway to attack it down. So there's Narset. Going to go and look for cards. Possibly should have popped the Walking Bliss in response. So I could draw a discard. Because we have we have the cards for the, the, the Gate to the Afterlife. Oh, beautiful. Thank you, thank you, thank you for returning my merchant. I'll take it. Because now we can we can pop down Narset. And yep, I think that's still the right play. 
We can pop down Narset and pop down to Fairy. So I'm going to go ahead and attack in. So at Narset, at Narset. Narset gets hit. Then we get to pop down to Fairy. And ditch a Marionette Master. Kill to Fairy. Gives another land. I think at this point, just like lands are fine. Maybe. Maybe I want to keep it in my hand, actually. Uh, I can actually just discard Merchants. So we'll play it and play a Neonate. Because Neonate seems better. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have done that land. So, opponent still has five cards in hand. We've, we've killed two Snar sets. They have another Ley Line of Anticipation. Uh, Night Thirst Run Nyx isn't generating up any mana at the moment. So, it's just three for three. Uh, so, we're, we're in the clear there. And two of the Nar sets that are problematic are gone. We don't have to worry, like, Time Wipes or any of that sort of... To be honest, I bet this is a... a um, next to Fate deck is my assumption. So I think we are going to cycle the Immersion of the Veil. So there's, there is, oh, beautiful. There is four cards in play. Um, yep, we have the win. So we're going to discard a card. To draw a card. And discard the Blood Crypt. We'll draw a card. There's a Rick's Matty Reveler. Uh, but we have enough right now. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to go ahead and crack the God Pharaoh's Gift to go get... Uh, what the... Oh, search your library. So I have to click search my library here. It's been a while since I played this. So search my library. There's God Pharaoh's Gift. We go to combat. We bring out the Master of Cruelties. Master of Cruelties attacks. It is unblocked. My opponent's life total goes down. To nil goes down to one and then we finish it off with the chamber century so pretty sweet deck so far um i'm okay we, we got what we wanted here i think we'll bring in like a spark harvest and a murderous rider um i don't we need we don't need gary's we don't need colgan's commands i don't think uh, we do need we do need thought seizes though. We're not gonna bring in like the collective brutality because you could actually miss on a lot of stuff. So what are the what are the options that we're not gonna win with in this particular like God Pharaoh's gift route actually seems kind of bad in this in this route. So Metalwork Colossus still seems okay with getting back with the Lesha and then putting the fabricate up to a four. Uh instead of you know, instead of creatures out, just putting in the, and then casting a few creatures. I don't know. I just don't think that versus Teferi's that these gates are going to do anything. Um, so let's try this route to see how well it works. Uh, we still have the ability to rip out cards uh, with the Thought Seizes. Uh, there's the merchant, the Master Cruelties. That point would probably bring, bring in Rest in Peace. But, I mean, Mission Successful. That is a pretty sweet combo. Uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm loving it. So again, this is what I get out of Magic. They don't have to be the most competitive decks. They've just got to be fun decks. Opponent's going to mulligan to Oblivion down to four. Probably to try to find a Rest in Peace. I'm pretty sure we can fight through Rest in Peace with his decks. We have a 3-3 beater in the form of Smuggler's Copter and the, in the form of Walking Ballista. So opponent is going Land Line of Anticipation. So again, I we didn't know what this, this deck is, but I'm 100% sure it is going to be a Nexus of Fate. 
Uh, so they're ramping out Nexus of Fate as quickly as possible with Nikto Shrine and Nyx, and then just going from there, and then, like, you know, casting multiple, Nar like, Narset will then dig for another one. Um, it could be approached the Second Sun, too. That could be the other way they're ramping into it. Uh, so Nikto Shrine and Nyx might need to go because of the addition of these Ley Lines. I'm not sure, but if they print any of the more free cards that come in and, and add towards converted mana cost, um, that's going to be a problem for the format. So which which as well is kind of weird. The Scry, I don't think, is quite worth it. But but Scrying, I guess, with both Next of Fate and Approach the Second Sun uh, and adding to the count of Nykthos and Nyx does make sense. So these two, two Nykthos and Nyx in a row. Unfortunately, uh, it is 11 o'clock at home, home and I, I, I walk to the store, so I'm going to have to run my uh, lazy butt back home before it gets too late. And that is that. So I'm going to call it right here. Here, there's not a lot I do to this deck, but definitely need to try to find another Metalwork Colossus just for for consistency sake. I would say for the Marionette Marionette combo, but so far so good. I'm liking the deck, and we'll we'll get some more gameplay of this. We'll update the Varls. We're not going to let our babies go. Um, sorry about uh, the top ten of Throne of the Drain cards. I think the standard is taking a backseat because Pioneer is just so open right now uh, to possibilities. But I hope you enjoyed this video. This has been Kevin with the Rogue Deck Builder. Your comments are more than welcome, and please do so in the comment section below for any sort of cards that I may have missed that could go in this deck. Thank you for watching.